Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is an E53, it's a 2001 X5, and it belongs to my buddy. He broke down last night. We're actually here on the side road. We're out in Chatsworth, horse country. And um, what actually happened is the water pump failed. The, the bearing kind of went out. It threw the belt off. And so yeah, stranded on the side of the road. I was able to go get a new water pump last night. And now we're here today to change it out. And I figured I'd take you along. So let's get started. Horse country. So, some of the things I've already done, I've taken this hood scoop off. It's just these little pop-up rivets that you take off. All you got to do is just pry up the center and pull it out. This thing will come off. Yours might be attached to the little scoop down here. All you have to do is sort of push in here, push in the little tab. So that'll pop off and out. Then you're going to need to take your fan and your fan shroud out. Now, <clears throat> if you are unaware, you are going to need a set of fan clutch tools and you need this little holder tool to counter hold the pulley and then you, all, you need a 32 millimeter wrench to get the pulley off. It's reverse threaded so when you get your fan wrench down on there you're going to need to go that way in order to get it loose. And uh, I have a particular video on a couple of different methods for getting those fan clutches loose. If you've never had yours loose before it can be really difficult to remove. There are going to be two more or three more little, you know, pop rivets just similar to the other ones that are going to be holding this in. You can, you know, spin your fan fully off and you'll just reach in and pull them out together. So this uh, wiring harness here is actually going to be attached to the shroud. You might want to reach down and push these two ears and kind of detach it. That's actually for the electric fan in the front right here, which we're missing a grill for. And there's also going to be, uh, you know, the air sensor, which you'll, you'll want to kind of disconnect. You'll just push on this little tab, pop it out, and then you can get that, uh, that fan shroud out. So we want to get the engine cover off. Um, I believe these are five millimeters and you just, they're quarter turns. All you gotta do is turn them a quarter. So I've already done that. So this was, this was the belt. Uh, we actually had to cut it out. Part of it was wrapped around the fan shroud, so that's the stuff we did last night. Torn to shreds. Here and here are two worm clamps. They're just six millimeters. You want to take them really loose, not just a little bit loose, so that you're not fighting them. And first I'm going to actually... So that's just where you squeeze on the top right here, and that's going to spread the two fingers on the side open. If you want to take that off. Look at that little vacuum hose. See, now that should be replaced. And I really don't want it to break right now, so I'm just going to push this off to the side right there. So this is the bad pulley in question, as you see. All messed up. Now, uh, what you want to do before you actually get your belt off, if your belt has not been shredded and you are doing this, uh, you know, preemptively, is you want to loosen up these four bolts while your belt is still on here because that's going to keep some tension on this pulley. In my particular situation, we're going to need to figure out a way to hold that pulley so that uh, we can actually get those bolts loose. Okay, so what I've done is I've wrapped the new belt around the pulley here and I'm just, I've got it sort of pinched. That can act as a little strap wrench and that'll, that'll give me some counter holding for us so I can use, uh, use this to sort of pull these bolts off. And the truth is, this thing probably has enough torque to just do that anyway. And even if it didn't, one trick you can use is you can just sort of get it moving and then put it on the bolt and that'll just sort of uh, give you even more torque to get a bolt off, kind of like this. So, in this case, I didn't really need to do this, but it's something you can do if you don't have one of these. Ooh, this is going to be fun. You got to get, uh, get something to pull that off. And that's what you do when you don't have a hammer. So, basically all we need to do is we need to take this coolant hose off we need to take this coolant hose off and because I want to take this up and move it out of the way I'm going to and this is actually 
attach permanently to this hose here. I'm going to actually detach it from down over here. And I think I'm also going to detach it down from, from down here. So that's going to peel back. I'm going to disconnect this connector, this connector here. And then we have this crossover pipe. And there's a bolt here. There's a bolt down here where we can't see it. There's a bolt down here on this side where we can't see it. We're going to take those loose, pull that crossover pipe out. Then we'll be able to unbolt the water pump and take that out. So that is the procedure. So let's start with down over here. There's just a little clip and you need a little flathead screwdriver. Pop in there, pop it loose. Now you want to be careful. You don't necessarily have to take the, pit, the little clip out, but if you do, just be sure you don't lose them. You can't just replace them. So uh, it turns out that I pulled off the wrong clip. There are two clips on here, which I couldn't see. So this one is just a smaller clip up on top. So uh, that little thing just came out. And what I did was I, I pulled it off and I put it back in here and I put the clip back in so that that, you know, whatever the hell that was stays in there. So this is just the thing we need to get off. So to get these off, you want to sort of wiggle around in a circle and wiggle off. I believe I have replaced this hose somewhat recently. That's why it came off so easily. You're probably going to struggle a lot more than that. But down here is also another little clip. Probably difficult to see, but the same kind of thing. Pull that out, we'll let that drain. So I'm gonna take this whole air box thing out of here because we're eventually gonna need to film over here. We're gonna need to get our hands down in here. It's just kind of gonna be in the way for me. So I'm gonna take it out. There's a 10 millimeter up over here. And this we normally you should have to reach down here and squeeze the sides of this, but that just kind of popped out. We'll need to disconnect the mass airflow sensor. Yeah, it actually makes it a lot easier. And now we can actually see the bolt over here that I'm gonna to need to get loose. And we'll need to just disconnect this hose from the, um, this is actually the valve for the secondary air pump. So I'm gonna squeeze this and take this off. So just kind of like that. Okay, so now we're going to get this coolant hose off. Sometimes that's what you need to do to actually get these hoses off. Figure out a way to pry on the outside lip. But be careful, again, the old ones, expect them to possibly crack and break. Again, this one is relatively new. I think less than a year old. So it was able to come off. So I'm just gonna put it down there. So now I'm gonna disconnect this connector. Up on that. I'm trying not to get dirt into the intake here because I don't have compressed air with me. Now this guy looks like it just popped off like a uh like that kind of like a uh, oxygen tensor connector since we had to cut the belt off i wasn't able to show you how to loosen the tensioner pulley to get it off the tensioner is held in place by these two 13 millimeter bolts you only need to loosen them to get the belt off Now that they're loose, you can see how the tensioner pivots. The tensioner is actually hiding one of the water pump bolts, so we'll need to remove the entire assembly. To do that, we'll remove both 13 millimeter bolts. Additionally, we'll remove this black plastic cover. And finally, we'll remove the T50 Torx bolt, and the entire assembly will come out. So, now all we need to do is get this crossbar off. There's going to be, what is this? This is a five millimeter 
bolt right there. Yep. We're going to switch to a 10 millimeter on a six inch extension. And I just sort of felt around for the bolt before. I could tell that it was on the top over here. No, it's not. It's fine. And it fell. So we'll have to figure that out. This one's on this side. And then we're just going to pull from both sides here. Pull that sucker out. Now we got a vacuum line attached to this. It's not the end of the world if you break it. It's going to be rotted. You're going to need to replace this. Not the end of the world if you break it and don't have it. You can drive to the store without it. You're going to get a code. But uh, the, the auto parts store can clear the code for you. And they can sell you vacuum hose by the foot. So... Not the biggest deal. So as you can see, there are O-rings on the sides of this pipe. You want to make sure they come out with it. They, I'm sure they will because they look like they're nice and flattened on there. So that's it. So as, as you saw before, I disconnected the hose from this side. That's why I did that so I could get this off. This is why you always keep a little magnet in your bag. Ha <laughs> ha. So we're going to take off this lower coolant hose right now. And I'm going to pull out this little clip here, same as on all the others. Hopefully this thing is going to pull off somewhat easily. Probably not. I don't think I changed this. I just a smaller screwdriver. Okay, that might be good. Yeah, that's all we needed. So what I did was I stuck my screwdriver down there like this and then I twisted it and that pried against the metal and that pushed it back and it pulled at the same time. So this little clip is going to be sort of in here. You could reach behind here with some pliers and push back and that should pop out. This one's already broken. So then you can just kind of get this thing loose and pull it off to the side, get it out of the way. So we can't see every bolt from where we're standing. This is a good time to look at your new part and see where the holes are. Now you can see where the bolts are. So obviously we got two underneath here. You can see that we got a housing right here. This is actually where the thermostat is. It looks like, I mean, you can take it off if you would be able to reach all the bolts, but you, can, you know, it's kind of difficult. You can do it. I can get this one from up here and I can get this one from down below. Uh, I don't think it's necessary though. We can still just reach underneath here and get these two bolts out. And then we'll just reach down here. We can just sort of feel along the sides of the unit and uh, we can see where the bolts are. So that's what we'll do. We're just going to get them all out. They're all pens. So I can see this one. Put your hand down there so we don't lose those. Oh yeah, I do love this Milwaukee ratchet. You guys know that. This is the 2457. And uh, they did send me the newer one. But I gotta say, I've been using, I'm grabbing for this one more and more. The newer one is just a little bit too big for me. Unfortunately. This, this one might be a washer. That was the longer one. That was the lower, the lower one from that side. And that one is also regular size. So that's four out of the five. We probably got a big one or another one along the side. It's going to be behind this big pulley, so we can't use this wrench to get it out. We're going to need to use. Probably a wrench. 
So the other one, again, it's behind this pulley. For some reason, they made this thing stick out. I, I have no idea why. I see they've got bouncing marks in it. But we're going to need to sort of reach up behind it. This is sort of a long ratcheting wrench that I have. I can see the bolt from this angle, so I can see that I'm on it. And uh, I'm just going to spin it out here. And it might be loose enough at this point that I don't really need this, but... We'll use it anyway. Okay, that was that one. That was the very bottom one. So that should be one, two, three, four, five. That should be it. So this thing is going to have two coolant pipes up in the top here. And it's likely that we're going to end up uh, pulling them off, pulling them because they're get, they actually run underneath the intake manifold to the back. They're, they're crossover pipes. And it's possible that we're going to pull them out as we're pulling this water pump off. Um, so if that happens, we're just going to sort of reach back and we're just going to slip them back in where they were. But I'm going to try at least to not pull both of them off. I want to get this thing sort of loose. At, no, I forgot one. I knew I forgot one. This is another long one. So that's a long, a similar long one to the other long one, which goes on the top. Okay. Now that thing's loose. Oh, look at that! Got lucky. So, I think that's bad. As you can see, we've got O-rings in here. Your new water pump should come with O-rings. Ooh, lucky. <laughs> yeah, change the water pump. Yeah, sure. So this housing is going to unbolt and it's going to transfer to our new pump and we're just going to need to unbolt it. See, we got an o-ring here we actually got a new one in our kit so that could have been reused in a pinch that's still pretty rubbery still pretty springy i really really love these kinifix plier wrenches they're just great they've reinvented the adjustable wrench so instead of a little screw to come loose this thing actually clamps the only thing is you got to get it just right, just the right thing, and it clamps on. If only I had a vise on me right now. Hang on. Get this just to the right thing. I don't have to squeeze that much. And then you can just loosen up and turn like that. So it's just a great great tool that you don't have to mess with. So this we're going to reuse. Luckily it comes with an aluminum washer so that can be reused. And we'll just toss this. So we've got all of our o-rings here. Two o-rings for these which is going to go in the new housing. And then this is going to get transferred to the new housing. just happen to be on the loudest street in the world. This is like where everybody comes to show off their Corvettes or something. Anyway, you can see that this is only going to fit on one way, which is going to be that way. Okay, so this housing's all ready to go. Be ready to put that thing on. So 
we're going to need to clear this old gasket off of here. And it's going to help if we have a scraper, razor blade or something. I brought a green roll lock disc, which I'm probably not going to use. I brought a brass brush, which I probably am going to use. Um, not too worried about uh, marring up the aluminum a little bit, you know, not, not having the best face on it because we've got a new gasket. Gasket makes up for all that kind of stuff. But it looks like this one's kind of crusted on. So I'm going to do my best to get this one off. And uh, we're not going to film that because it's just going to take forever and the camera's going to be in my way. So I like to kind of put some dabs of RTV on here just to stick the gasket on so it doesn't fall off. You don't need to run a bead because that's what the gasket's for. The gasket does the sealing. This is just a little bit of glue. Make sure the gasket doesn't slip off. I'll put some over here too. Okay. Just holds it in place. It's honestly probably too much. I don't even want any on the inside. This is dielectric grease, which is also called silicone paste, and that lubricates O-rings. It's rubber safe lubricant. You definitely want to lubricate O-rings because they will just slip right on if you do that. If you don't do it, you're struggling with them. So we didn't talk about where the bolts go. These long bolts go here and here. The short bolts go everywhere else. So basically, you can see there's these two alignment dowels sticking out from the engine here, and here that was where those long bolts went. Maybe that is the way this guy wants to go on. I'm not going to do the full tightening yet. Just got those two on. The reason I normally you want to get all bolts started uh, before you tighten everything on, but this thing has alignment dowels, so it can't really move around. Now that's on those alignment dowels, so I'm reasonably sure I'm going to get all of these these bolts in anyway. That's why I did that. But normally you can get them all started first. So the torque on these is pretty light, it's about probably I think it's 10 foot-pounds, 7 or 10 foot-pounds, I forget <laughs> now, um, I think it's 7 foot-pounds, uh, which is not a lot and you can use a torque wrench if you want, but you don't really need to, you just sort of, you should sort of learn to feel this, you know, you want to give even torque on all the bolts. You just want, want to give them the same amount of torque. You don't want to over tighten them. You don't need to go crazy with it. You just gotta, you know, make them tight. If it feels like you're about to twist it off, like if the thing's not moving and you're starting to put more and more effort and you're seeing that it's not moving and not moving, it's too tight. It's already tight enough. You can stop. So, I just got to tighten that bottom one, which I got to do by hand because I can't get that wrench in there. See how I'm choking up on this wrench? I'm not going back here because that would give too much torque that way. I'm just going here, treating it like a normal ratchet. That way I'm not over tightening. That's it. So we can go ahead and get our tensioner back on. The torque on this is probably a lot. 
that should be good. I'm not going to make these super tight yet. And we're going to need to pivot those. Let's see. So those can still pivot. We'll do that at the end. I'm going to put this cap on here. I don't want to forget that. That protects the bearing in there. So now we're going to get our little crossover pipe in. I actually felt it slip in on both ends. So we had that middle bolt. That was the number five Allen. And those two tens on either side. I'm just going to make sure this one is all the way on. Because you can't feel if you've started the threading or not. But now it's tight. Now I can feel that it stopped. So I knew it was going in the whole time now. And I can see that I've started that one already. So now I can just spin it on. They don't need to be tight. You know, super duper tight. Just hold this. That's all that one needs. So now we can just start attaching our hoses, which is going to go real quick. You want to push those clips in and these are quick connect hoses. When it snaps, it's on. So that's the nice thing about these. There should be a little alignment notch for most of these. That one snaps on. Got this smog pump one over here on the side. I'm going to snap in some point. That one is stiff. Ah, there we go. Now, this little vacuum line. Important. we got to get that one on. Let's see. Where does it want to be? I think it wants to be through there. I need to make a mental note to myself to change this line. This is going to be a 3.5 millimeter ID line in case you guys need to find that. Uh, I'll throw a link in the description to where you can get some good silicone based ones online. This is crumbling. <laughs> Definitely needs to be changed. And we should not forget this line, which I had moved out of the way. This was that lower hose that we just obscured, but it's down here. That would have been a bad one to forget. In fact, that's a difficult one to get on right now. But it's on. Now we're good. We're going to reconnect our electrical connectors. It's got to be coolant temperature, obviously. So we forgot to put this on, and it actually goes here. And this little fork thing grabs the side of this right here. So that's that. Okay. So this obviously wants to go in here, but <laughs> I'm not going to do that because it looks like it wants to bend this a little too much. So I'm just going to put it on here and that's going to be fine. So now we're going to get this pulley in. Probably going to help to have one of these to start with. Yeah, I don't get it. Feels like I did. Hey, luck. And we're not going to forget to tighten those a little extra after we get the belt on. So this is the belt routing. You can see that the belt just goes down around this pulley here, comes up around, goes around the, the crankshaft, and then goes down around this 
pulley here and comes up back around. So that's how that goes. To tension it, you can see how there's the inner 13 here and there's an outer 17. And what we need to do is hook one ratchet on there and we need to turn that 17 in and you can see how it presses down on that hydraulic tensioner, right? Right there. So now that we got the hydraulic tensioner in, I need to tighten up that lower 13. So we need to have two of these guys like this. So I'm gonna get this one ready and on that bolt right there, and I'm gonna tension it. Tighten that up and tighten that up. So we're good there. So you can see that most of the job is done, guys. We just gotta put some things back in and back on. I think you guys can probably figure out the ending from here. So we're just gonna spend some time, put a couple of these things back on, mass airflow. We will put our main intake tube back on. We'll get this guy connected to it. And uh, we'll get everything tightened back up and get our fan put back on. And then we'll get some cooling in this thing and we'll get out of here. So we're just gonna do all that, but you know, there's no real need to film the rest of it. Like I said, just making sure that these bolts are tight. You don't want this pulley to come off and have your belt slip off and get torn up again. So we did not get out of this without some casualties, namely right here. I snapped this when I was leaning over. So I'm going to have to do sort of a little fix. We're going to run to the O'Reilly's around the corner. We're going to get some, I think, 3 8 uh, vacuum or some, yeah, 3 8 hose, okay, and some clamps. And I'm just going to put it on here, put it on there, and hopefully that will be good enough to uh, get us until we can actually replace this part, because I doubt we're going to find this part around here. But We'll take the part number anyway, and uh, hopefully we'll get that done. Anyway, yeah, I would have liked a nice clean ending to this one, but unfortunately it's just how it is. So I'm going to run down to the parts store, see if we can fix this. We're losing the light. If I don't film an, in, an outro now, I, don't, I didn't bring any lights with me. So anyway, we're going to say that's it for now. It's not that big a deal, not that hard of a job really. And uh, you saw how it's done, it's pretty easy, so uh, good luck doing it. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more. I'm the 50s Kid, thanks a lot for watching. So that's our little makeshift repair. It's looking good. It's gonna hold.